Good afternoon, everyone. Okay, my, and thank you for your time. My name is Kyle, and along with Fernando, Sandra, Assad, and Duck, we will be discussing the recent events that have occurred with Boeing, an American-based company of the largest manufacturing of planes in the world. The basis of today's presentation is to fully discuss and cover the changes that Boeing has made that led to the crashes, as well as the overall implications the company faces today. We will begin by discussing what new features Boeing has made on its best-selling plane, as well as what exactly went wrong to cause the crashes, and what may have been done to be prevented. Next, we will touch on the legal ramifications that Boeing now faces, proceeding by the economic and financial impact on the company today. We will finalize this presentation by discussing what remedies and actions Boeing has taken to rebuild its brand. We will now begin with Fernando, and I'll tell you all about Boeing's new features. Yeah. So, like Kyle said, the 737 is actually one of Boeing's top-selling planes. The only problem is they made a couple of new changes with the Max 8, starting with they added a larger jet engine. Now, this thing was put in because it would be more fuel efficient, which allowed them to travel further, but it caused the plane to go nose up more than any previous model. So to correct for that, they installed the MCAS system, which uses uh, sensors on the side of the plane to kind of help the pilot just make sure that they're flying at a level uh, flight pattern. Kind of like your uh, lane departure in a car would keep you from drifting off. Yeah. So basically what happened and what's gone wrong is the MCAS is getting was getting faulty readings. So while in reality you're flying a normal plane, it's saying that you're going nose up, which could cause the engines to stall. As a result, it goes and corrects the plane to fly at what it thinks is the correct level, and in turn turns the plane into a nose dive. So as a result, we have two fatal crashes. <coughs> Part of that is due to the lack of training that the pilots have. MCAS is a brand new system and Boeing really didn't give them much knowledge of it. They figured that the little bit that they put into the manual in the planes would be enough. Um, the other problem is that in both of these planes they were missing safety features. There was a bottom of the line basic model for an additional fee. They could have had a sensor that lets the pilots know that the MCAS is getting conflicting data, or they could have even paid a little bit more and been able to see what those two sensors are reading. So now, as far as what they're having to do with legally, I'll pass it on to Sandra. Hello, my name is Sandra. Hello. I'll be talking about the legal ramifications of what Boeing is currently facing. Um, what happened between Boeing and the Federal Avi Aviation Administration? Basically, the FFA is uh, something similar to the FDA, like the Food and Drug Administration. So basically what it does, um, it's supposed to do these, um, these uh, frequent checkups on planes to make sure that they're safe to fly and they're um, available for the market. <clears throat> and also um, what Boeing did with the FAA was uh, they basically hired their own watchdogs to um, speed up the process, to speed up the certification, the safety regulations, to put it out faster in the market. And um, usually this process has been going on for years and, and um, it didn't go so well with these two previous crashes. And um, ever since these crashes, uh, the CEO, Dennis Muhlenberg, uh, issued an apology to the victims' families that yes, it's their fault that these crashes happened. And ever since, uh, ever since he apologized, it basically wrecked havoc with the families of the victims, um, both in Indonesia and Ethiopia. And um, this isn't the only thing that they're going through. They're also experience um, fallout with their financial situation.
situation, which Doug will further explain to you in this next part. Thank you, Sandra. Mm -hmm. So uh, when we look at uh, the financial appoint field, uh, there is uh, four main uh, financial threats from this crisis. So uh, first of all is uh, the cost of fixing the software itself. So it could cost uh, the companies billions of dollars uh, to uh, redesign the, the computerized uh, flight control system on hundreds of uh, fleets around the world. And uh, second is the, the potential compensation to the airline. Um, airlines that uh, have <coughs> aircraft remain uh, grounded because of this will uh, seek uh, financial compensation and um, uh, the bill uh, for Boeing will grow uh, will grow rapidly uh, if this drag to summer when you know uh, flight schedule and uh, the cost implications certainly increase and uh, third will be the cost of delays in Boeing delivery so uh, currently uh, Boeing experienced uh, the uh, logistics problem they couldn't buy uh, plant storage for those uh, grounded aircraft and uh, so according to analysis that um, every uh, two months of uh, delayed delivery they they will reduce the revenue for uh, 2019 around uh, 5.1 billion and uh, so uh, last but not least is the possibilities of order cancellation so uh, till now there's only one cancellation from Indonesia uh, the orders of 50s um, aircraft of the 737 max and um, yeah, the bills is estimated to be cost around 4.9 billion and so um, so the total sales of the 737 max is um, account for around a third of Boeing's uh, profit and um, they expect that um, the 737 max will uh, make up 90% of the 737 delivery in 2019. But, uh, however, uh, the order and deliveries of uh, the, uh, the Boeing in the first quarter is, is sinks rapidly. They, they don't have any new order from, uh, for the uh, new uh, 737 MAX. So, and so on last uh, Friday's, uh, Boeing said that they will reduce their production by 20% from 52 um, to 42 aircraft uh, every month and there's no uh, end date for it so and um, so uh, on the, the stock market they uh, the the stock price uh, for almost 12% um, and uh, they raised almost 27 billion uh, of their value so um, so next, uh, Asas will uh, talk more about uh, how Boeing reacts and their resolutions you know, on the current issue. All right, so uh, before I proceed, I just want to go over that what we all covered. We all know that the company has been losing a lot of revenue. Their, their operations have been on hold. They cannot make new aircraft. They had orders from Malaysian Airlines. They're not going through. Everything is being on hold, costing money a lot, a lot of money for the company. Billions of dollars in revenue, manufacturing overhead costs that they cannot sell. So they have one rebuttal after another. After that, they have losses to worry about. Then the market and media reputation, because they lost it. Now they're also losing personnel, pilots. They do not feel safe to fly with Boeing anymore because they don't trust the company as much. So in order to chime all of that in, what are the, some current measures that the company has taken to overcome those objections? So first, they're trying to provide extensive training to the airborne crew. That does, does not only include the primary pilot, but also the second and the co-pilot as well. They're gonna increase the quantity of their simulators in their manufacturing and training facility so they can invest that money to train their pilots well. They're having those lawsuits pay out right now that they, they want they, the company that they are looking forward to pay out if they admit that it's their mistake. But as far as we're talking as current as today, they're trying to blame the batteries of the MCAS sensor, let alone the MCAS sensor itself. So they're saying the MCAS was never faulty, it was just the batteries that were uh, supplied through them through a third party, they were faulty. So again, in order to monitor their supply chain operations more efficiently, they would gotta make sure, because we know that third party cost is cost efficient, but we do lose the quality at the end of the time. They are trying to make changes to their system software, 
me being an MIS major, I know that costs a lot of money. They have they would have to do some ad analysis and then develop a new system cycle and then create a new software, implement it, integrate it with the current legacy system. That's that's just hard for them to do. But they're still trying to make sure and they have a very firm commitment to make those changes so the company can get back on track. They will also improve the process of certification. As to Sandra, what she was talking about, they had, that they had a lot of personal connections in the FAA, the Federal Aviation Administration, that were just certifying the audits. They were saying, hey, it's good to go, they certified it, but when the FAA uh, director, Dennis, the, uh, Dennis um, Milberg, I think that's his name, when he went through and under that, um, and he like uh, investigated, he found out that those people who audited the certifications, they did not have a good employment record with the company. So they are bringing that to the Senate and make sure that the company also implements on that. At the end of the day, the investigation that are held being by the FAA, um, uh, they are just trying to make sure that they have a safer environment, not only for the pilot, but for their clients as well. So the company can get back on track and then they can get all the damage that has been lost in that meantime. All right, and that pretty much concludes our presentation. If y'all have any questions.